Hey guys, welcome back to another video in our mini series on React hooks. So in this video, we will learn everything about use reducer and we will also see why use reducer hook is more preferable than the use state when we have to manage complex component state in our React projects. So if this sounds interesting, then stick around. Also, don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. So let's get started. Alright guys, so I have a very basic React application with one component which is the app component and inside the app component I have a very basic example of a counter example and we are managing the state of this counter example with the help of the use state react hook. So if I click on the counter increment, it's going to increment the counter. If I click on the decrement, it's going to decrement the counter. But the thing is use state is not the only way to manage the component state. We have one more hook which helps us to manage the state and that is the use reducer. So the use reducer hook is more preferable over the use state hook whenever you want to manage a complex component state. So this use reducer hook works very similar with the one we saw in the Redux. So if you are not familiar with the Redux, then I have a video on it. I will add the link in the description below or you can also click on the card above and jump to it directly. So what we are going to do, we are going to take a look on the two examples. First, we are going to convert this simple counter example with the help of the use reducer. And then we are going to see that how use reducer can help us to manage more complex state. So now what I'm going to do, so I'm going to change this use state into the use reducer. So let's import the use reducer first. So you can import the use reducer like this. And then I'm going to write a constant and this constant will be equals to the use reducer. And this use reducer takes two parameters. The first is the reducer function, which is going to take the state and the action and based on the actions is going to change the state. And the second parameter is the initial value of our state. So I'm going to write a reducer here and the other parameter will be the initial state. So whatever the initial state we need to assign. So in our case, the initial state will be zero. So let's add a constant here and I'm going to write an initial state and this initial state will be equals to the zero. And for the reducer, we are going to create a function. So I'm going to create a reducer function. And this reducer function will take two parameters. The first one is the state and another one will be the action which we want to perform on this state. And this returns two things. The first one is the state which we can use to display the data. And the second one is the dispatch function which is going to dispatch our action. So I'm going to write a dispatch here. All right, and now we have the use reducer with a state and a dispatch. And next what we are going to do is whenever we click on this increment button or decrement button, we need to dispatch an action. So let's change this. So this will be a function and this is going to dispatch the action and our action will have two things, the type and the payload. So for now we don't have any payload. So I'm just going to do a type and the type will be increment. Okay, and let me copy this. I'm going to add it here and this will become decrement. So now we have the increment and decrement dispatch function. So let's go to the reducer and write our switch cases. So I'm going to write a switch case and this will be action dot type. So if our action dot type is equals to the increment in that case, what we need to do, we need to make a state increment by one. So I'm going to return the state and I'm going to add one to the state. All right. And for the decrement, I'm just going to copy this again and I'm going to add it. I'm going to do a little bit of justification and this will become decrement and I will do minus one. And for the default, I can just throw an error. So I will throw a new error. Alright, so now we have set up our reducer and now we can just comment this uh, use state part and instead of the counter, we are going to make use of the state to display our counter. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to add it. Alright, and it's giving us error for the set counter and the counter as we have no longer the functions. So let's comment this part as well. 
Okay, so now if I click on the increment, I will still get the increment. And if I click on the decrement, I will still be able to decrement my counter. So this is how you can manage the state using the use reducer as well. So use state is not the only option, but this is very simple example and this is not a perfect case for the use reducer. Let's see in another application where we are going to make a little bit complex state and that application will be the add contact and delete contact. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a little bit of modification. So the first modification I'm going to do that my initial state, I want my initial state to be an array. And initially I'm going to have a one record. So I'm going to write an ID and this ID will have a date dot now so that we can have a unique ID for every contact. And then I'm going to have the name. So I'm going to just write a name as the page and I'm going to have an email. So I'm going to write the email as the page at the rate gmail.com. All right, so I have the record now and what we want for this, we want the input fields where we can actually enter the name and the email address. So to manage the name and the email address, I will make use of the state. So let's go and write a contact of state name and set name. This will be equals to the use state. And initially I don't want to pass any value. So I'm just going to give an empty string. All right, and for the email also, I'm just going to copy paste and I'm going to change this to email. So this will become email and this will become set email. And for here, we need to create the input fields. So let's create the input fields. So I'm going to create a simple form. So this will be my form and my form will contain an input type of text placeholder I'm going to give as name and value I'm going to give as the name and we are going to have an on change. So on change I need to set my set name. So this will be an arrow function and I'm going to do a set name and the set name will be e dot target dot value. Alright, so now we have the input field for the name and the next input field we are going to do it for the email. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm add here. So I'm going to change this to email. This will get changed to email and this will become email. Alright, so now we have set the name and the email and whenever we want to submit the form, we need to add this contact in our state. So I'm going to write an on submit here. So whenever I submit a form, I need to call a function which will be an add contact. All right. And I need to create a function for the add contact. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to write a constant add contact. This will be equals to an arrow function. All right. So now we have the add contact and the other thing we need to create is a button to submit our form. So I'm going to create a button here. So this will be a button for add contact and we don't need this increment and decrement. So let me remove them. And in our reducer, what we need to do for the reducer, we are going to have a state which will the initial state will be this one. And for the action, we are going to have an addition of the contact and a deletion of the contact. So let me change this to to add. So this will become add and this is going to become a delete contact. All right. And we can do one thing to display our contacts. We can actually write some JSX that will display our contacts. So I'm going to write a div and this div will have an UL. So I'm going to add a state here, then state dot map. And inside that it will going to give me a contact and I can have an arrow function. And here I can write the li list. And inside the list, I will write an H2 tag and this H2 will contain my contact dot name. So we have two fields. We have the name and we have the email ID. So I can write the name here and I will for now, I will just give a key here. So this key will become contact dot ID. All right. And we just need to return this. So let's return this JSX. So I'm going to return the JSX. So now you can see that we get the name as the page and we also need to make this as a button. So I'm going to add a button here. So this will be a button and this button will have 
a add contact. All right, and now if I console the state, so let me do a console of the state. So I'm going to do a console log of the state. So, so far I haven't done anything much. I have just created the JSX for the input fields. I have created a button and I am having the initial state, which is the uh, state with one record. So I'm just going to display that record with the help of the JSX. So if I go to the inspect and inside the inspect, I will go to the console. Then we can see that we have one array with a value, which is the initial state. Now what we want is whenever we click on the add contact, we need to submit the form and add the contact in our state. So for that, what we can do is, so let's go to the add contact button. So here we have the add contact button. And if I click on this add contact, then you will see that our page is getting refreshed. So we can avoid that part. If I do event dot prevent, prevent default so that our page will not get refreshed. And when we submit the form, so I need to take an event as an argument here. All right. So now we need to submit the form. So when we submit the form, we need to empty the values in the input tag. So I'm going to do a set name and I'm going to set the set name as empty again string. And for the email, I'm going to set the empty string again. So now what we want to do, we need to dispatch an action for the addition of the contact in our state. So let's dispatch a action and this action will contain uh, two fields. One will be the type and our type will be the add and there will be a payload. So we need to define our payload. So for that, I will just create a simple object of a contact and this object will have the ID. So the ID will be date dot now. So this is going to give us a unique date stamp and then there will be a name. So this name will be equal to the name of our uh, state which we are using. So this is equals to the name and for the email will be equal to the email. And since we are using ES6, I'm just going to remove this as the key and the value are same so we can eliminate it. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to remove this. So this is my new contact. And when I do a dispatch, I need to pass this new contact. So I'm going to add this new contact here. All right. So now I am dispatching the action whenever I want to add my contact. So now let's go to the reducer. So here in the reducer, what we want to return is we want to get the state, the current state, and then we need to add the new contact to the current state. So here I'm going to return an array. So I'm going to do a spread operator to get the initial state. And once I get the initial state, I'm going to write action dot payload and this action dot payload will be my new contact. All right. So now if I save it and let's try to submit something. So I'm going to write the page here. So we already have the page, right? So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to write a test and this will be equals to test at the rate gmail.com. And if I click on the submit, then we see that now in our state, we have two objects and we can also see that the new contact is now added to the list. So if I add more, so let me write a Malvia and I'm going to do a Malvia at the rate gmail.com. And if I click on the add, I'm going to add one more state. So this is how you can actually manage the complex state with the help of use reducer. And it creates very easy and simple to use. So it's more similar to the pattern we follow in the Redux. All right. So now let's add the delete as well. So what I will do, we are going to create a delete button. So inside this, we have a contact name. I'm going to also print the contact email. So let me add an email and then I'm going to add a button. So I'm going to create a div and inside this div, I'm going to add a button. All right. And when we click on this delete button, we need to dispatch an action. So I'm going to write a delete here and to dispatch an action, we're going to make a function and then we are going to write a dispatch. All right. And in the dispatch, we need to pass the action. So the type of our action will be delete. So let me add delete. And for the payload, we just need the ID of the contact in order to delete the contact. So I'm going to pass an object with will have the ID. So this ID is the contact dot ID. All right. So now we have the dispatch function for the delete as well. Let's go to our reducer function. So inside the reducer function, we have a case for the delete 
and when we delete it we want to return a new array with a deleted contact so this we can get it with the help of the uh, array method filter so i'm going to filter my results based on the id so i'm going to get my current state and then i'm going to apply the filter on it so i will add the filter this is going to give me a contact and then what i want to return here is i want to return those contacts which doesn't match the id so i'm going to take the contact dot id and this should not be equals to the action dot payload dot id all right now if i save it and we can see that now we have the three records in our uh, contact array and if we want to delete it and if i click on the delete then i will only have the two records if i delete test as well i'm going to have only one record and i can delete the initial record as well so this is how you can make use of the use reducer to manage your complex component state and with the help of this use reducer and the context api you can really do a powerful global state management for your project so we will see this in our one of the videos where we can combine the use reducer hook and the use context hook and we are going to create a powerful global state so that's all i have in this video i hope you understood the use reducer hook and how to use the use reducer hook to manage your complex component state so you can prefer the use reducer over the use state if you want to manage the complex component state of your application so if you like the video a thumbs up is appreciated you can also connect with me via facebook or instagram you can also follow me on twitter for latest updates i will add the links in the description below and before you go don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one thank you thanks for watching